Flash, a name that will ring a bell for many. Once upon a time, Flash was one of the most installed things on the entire planet and played host to millions upon millions of websites, web apps, and most importantly to us, games and animations. Cool math games, Y8, Miniclip, Newgrounds. In the eyes of a student who couldn't care less about being taught how to use software made before he was even born, these websites were an escape. They transport you from the dull and meandering present into a different and vibrant world, where, in that young student's mind, almost anything was possible. This video will be a little look back at Flash, the games we used to play as kids, and the Flash platform's legacy in cultivating an entire generation of talented artists, musicians, and game designers. It'll also hopefully teach a new generation about Flash and its role in shaping the games they play today, and help them appreciate the forefathers that got them there. Sit back, grab a drink, and enjoy the show. I'll skip over the history of Flash as I don't want to come off as a basic-ass Wikipedia reader, but you can check out Johnny Vector's video linked in the description if you'd like to know more about it. Basically, Flash originated as an art software, then an animation software, and finally an interactive games platform. It became immensely popular, and almost every single website took advantage of Flash in some way. From movie promotion sites to news outlets to Goku, but what we're focusing on today is the work of independent creators making and uploading their own Flash media. And for that, nothing was more important than Newgrounds. Newgrounds is really the YouTube before YouTube. Created in 1995 by a man named Tom Fulp, it was one of the first websites hosting user-generated multimedia on the entire internet, including art, music, games, and animations. And when it was finally opened to the public in 2005, it instantly became a hub for internet creativity, allowing for young people to dip their toes into creating their first ever works of art. For better or for worse. It's me, Mario. <laughs> The mid-aughts to early 2010s can be considered the golden age of Flash. This was the time where Flash was at its most prevalent, and artists could utilize Flash at its fullest potential after many years of trial and error. And while hundreds of high-quality Flash games and animations are being uploaded to websites like Newgrounds, Armor Games, and Y8, Vietnam's internet infrastructure was growing rapidly. Net cafes sprouted like mushrooms across the country, and personal computers were beginning to see adoption. To young kids from back then, saving up 5,000 dong to sneak out to the net cafe, or just mucking about on their parents' Core 2 Duo laptop, these Flash websites were a core part of their childhood. But enough reminiscing. Here are some Flash and Flash-adjacent things that you knew, loved, and can experience today. Flash was an animation software before it could make games, and of course, cartoons became an essential part of its identity. Many popular memes were born of Flash, and they were integral in establishing internet culture as we know it today. Of course, there are just far, far too many great Flash animations to show off, but here's some notable ones to get your nostalgia bone kicking. Stick characters are ubiquitous. If you can draw four lines in a circle, you can draw a person. It's the most basic possible caricature of a human being, and therefore, incredibly versatile. As a result, for young animators wanting to get started, this anatomically absent, monochromatic shell was the perfect vehicle to immediately jump to the fun part of animation, getting the character to move. Enter Xiao Xiao. Ready, steady, go! To my knowledge, this was the first Stickman fighting video ever to be uploaded on the internet, being released in 2002. 
This video is two years older than me. Sorry if that made some of you cringe. Xiao Xiao is a 2D stickman interpretation of fights often seen in Hong Kong action flicks, which in turn took inspiration from Chinese wuxia. The choreography is highly stylized and featured the use of weapons much like wuxia, and a guy fucking clones himself and even keeps fighting. No motivations were needed other than senseless and over-the-top cartoon violence, and it was an instant Newgrounds hit. Eight sequels were made for the series, laying the groundwork for everything stick-related that came after, including one which you've definitely heard of. Animator vs. Animation by Alan Becker is a video that I and many others remember fondly. The idea of simply drawing a stick man in MS Paint, and he just comes to life and uses stuff he finds on your toolbars to fight against you, that's fucking awesome. This type of fourth wall breaking creativity planted the seeds of imagination in millions of kids around the world. And it also made fucking bank. Numbers two, three, and four in the series were even more successful, for even reaching nearly 200 million views on YouTube. And to think he almost sold the rights to the animation to some random ass company for 75 bucks? Thank God he had the foresight to decline. Cause, well, we all know how he turned out. Emulators are things that exist. Who knew? In fact, they've been a thing since the late 90s and early 2000s, since people have wanted to play these classic games on things other than their parents' televisions for a long, long time. But right next to being able to play the games themselves, emulators created a different opportunity thanks to their built-in sprite dumping functionality. So in 2001, a young man named Randy Salem used these now accessible retro game assets and created a brand new series of animated shorts called Video Game Director's Cuts. I didn't say they were good. These were comedic short parodies of retro games made in Flash, essentially the prototype for how it should have ended, and other similar animated parodies. And that's all well and good, but what if you used those sprites and made something brand new? How about an epic tale of good versus evil, featuring intense action sequences on 2000s era club music, taking inspiration from Mario, Sonic, and Dragon Ball? Mario! Super Mario Bros. Z was incredible. It was a little kid's imagination turned reality. Every daydream you had in 5th grade geometry actualized into expertly made flash cartoons. And I do mean expertly made. Maybe it's due to the already excellent sprites from Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, but the emotions and thoughts of characters are easily understood, even to foreigners that didn't know a lick of English. The sound design and music is also excellent. What other animation with Nintendo characters can you name that uses The Prodigy? This was a remarkable and clearly very taxing undertaking for solo creator Mark Haynes, and all of it was for free. Millions of childhoods were made better thanks to this one man toiling away in his bedroom, making three hours of animated content for all to see. And although I wasn't there to watch SMBZ in its heyday, since genuinely I thought it was a video game and got really mad when it wasn't, I can appreciate it for what it's done for many, many people around the world. Ed's World may not be the most iconic Flash animated series, but to me it's among one of the most strongest representations of the many opportunities given to us by the internet. A 13 year old boy named Ed Gould made some stick figure animations on the internet using the hottest new software everybody was using called Macromedia Flash. Then. 
he made an animation depicting his own daily life, but still using stick figures, so the characters didn't have much definition. The next year, he would make a significant sequel to that animation, ditching Stickman for his own character designs, and focus more on him and his friend Matt's adventure through town. Then, he'd meet two people through an internet forum about Stickman, and they'd become his best friends. Ed's animations were growing into proper TV-style cartoons, with actual plots and voice acting for the characters, which were pretty rough. Excuse me, but do you know what- Oh my god, he bit off his arm! But steadily, this format would be matured, along with Ed's skills as an artist and an animator. Many classic episodes would be made throughout the years. Zombie Attack, Ruined, Spares, Moving Targets, Movie Makers, What the Future, and Ed's world was slowly building a massive following. His channel was nearing 400,000 subscribers in March of 2012, and the magnum opus he was working on would have surely pushed it over the line and then some. But unfortunately, tragedy would strike. Ed Gould passed away in 2012 after a six-year-long battle with cancer at just the tender age of 23. But before his death, he was determined to tell his friends that this was not the end. He just wouldn't allow it. As his friend Tom would say, Ed may be gone, but his world will keep on spinning. A fundraiser was launched and crushed by thousands of fans who wanted the series to continue. The magnum opus, Space Face, would be continued and completed by talented animator Paul Ter Vord. Twelve cartoons would proceed to be made, and beyond all expectations, these became some of the most viewed animations on the entirety of YouTube, with Fun Dead exceeding over 116 million views as of writing this script. Hundreds of millions of people were being introduced to Ed's world for the very first time, including myself. I remember watching Fun Dead as a wee 12 year old and eagerly expecting the release of The End, what would be the final episode after the Ed's World Legacy fundraiser. But even then, Ed's World just wouldn't die. Tom would depart, but Matt has continued to work to release more episodes, determined to keep Ed's World spinning for as long as it can. And if you traveled back in time and talked to the Ed Gould of 2002, he would not be able to believe the global impact that his show would have. Rest easy, Ed Gould, and thank you for the memories. Well, that was a bit heavy, wasn't it? Let's line up a little bit by talking about something that I actually have a little bit of knowledge about, and that is Flash games. After playing so many of them in skull-rattlingly boring university classes, I feel like I'm finally confident enough to talk to you about this art form. So, without further ado, here are some amazing Flash games. <laughs> Solidly a Flash all-timer, Age of War is like Age of Empires, but for babies. Instead of having to micromanage your units right up to how they want their nails painted, Age of War strips it down to the only thing you'd ever want in an RTS, constant fighting. You have one straight line, all of your units come out in a row, and they fight each other head on. The only strategy you need to think about is what units to send out, how you manage your money, and when to use the fucking natural disasters you have at your fingertips every 20 seconds or so. Seriously, why can't I just rain down meteors onto the other guy's base instead of barely missing the soldiers? This game is not at all complex, but it does get kids' strategic minds working. And of course, the goddamn music. Make it louder, Carbine. Yeah, there we go. Waterflame's Glorious Morning is surely one of the most recognizable songs in Flash history, maybe even internet history. The uplifting and adventurous melodies, coupled with medieval sounding instruments, and a beat that makes you think of marching soldiers. It's a cheesy, but undeniably catchy action song that can get stuck in your head for days. Overall, a goddamn hood classic. And the classics just keep coming. 
Fancy Pants Adventures is a parkour platforming game developed by Brad Bourne. In it, you control a radical dude with fancy pants as he runs, jumps, and kicks his way through a world made from sketch drawings. The movement in this game is very unique versus its peers. Instead of opting for the Mario School of Precision, Brad has taken up the Sonic School of Momentum. Your character accelerates fast and uses his speed to fly all over the place, leading to a very liberating platforming experience, although the level design of World 1 does not complement it. The wonderful smooth animations of Fancy Pants certainly contributes to this free feeling, as everything he does looks natural, and therefore feels natural. The first game is so short it's basically a tech demo, but Brad Bourne saw an opportunity with this concept and ran with it. World 2 is basically just World 1 but more, with new colorful graphics and more movement options for Fancy Pants such as sliding and ledge grabbing, along with levels that are finally suitable for his style of movement. World 3 and 4 continue to iterate with Fancy Pants Man getting a pencil to whack things with, or a pen which he can do... a lot. World 1 was also remade in 2012 with the newer engine used for 3 and 4, called World 1 Remix, and it's absolutely wonderful. Definitely worth a play if you haven't already. I found myself being a bit confused on the whole Fancy Pants chronology, but I think I now have the definitive list of what you should be playing, and I'll leave it in the description. Happy Wheels. I don't think this needs any introduction. Happy Wheels is an icon of the internet, and its sheer longevity is a testament to what it did so well. The concept of subjecting these archetypal genres of human to an all-you-can-eat buffet of spikes, pitfalls, and explosives is in general very appealing, especially to the 2011 mind. Another innovation that makes Happy Wheels so enduring is the inbuilt level creator and browser. You could play maps made by people all over the world, and of course, this means people can and will push it to its absolute limit, including some questionable genres that came up. And thanks to all of that, Happy Wheels became tremendously popular on YouTube during the mid-2010s, and I would say a significant number of channels can attribute their growth to this game. Today in 2024, Happy Wheels videos continue to be made as more kids discover these things and get really excited by the funny gore, just like we did 10 years ago. But of course, we all know what's coming. The GOAT. Super Smash Flash 1, baby. Hell yeah. Look at that, look at that Mario. Look at, that, look at that Mario shoot the shoot the fireball and it does 80% damage. Um uh, uh it has Sonic. That The one true king of classroom chaos. You know this game, I know this game, everybody knows this game. From its inception as a humble little Flash game by humble little people, Smash Flash 2 slowly but surely evolved into one of the most massive, content-rich, and feature-complete Flash games ever. It featured 47 playable characters, a boatload of stages, multiple single-player modes, multiple multiplayer modes, and even, get this, online. Yes, you can take this Flash game online and play against other people. It's jank as hell and you need an account, but it works. All of this for free for seven years. Smash Flash 2 is possibly the greatest love letter to the entire Smash franchise, and it's simultaneously a blessing to the millions upon millions of kids who have downloaded and played this game with their friends, whether on a crummy laptop or a school computer. I have so many memories of playing this game with friends throughout my school years. Three people awkwardly squeezing in on a single shitty membrane keyboard, not knowing about the concept of key rollover and wondering why their moves didn't come out. But we didn't care. We just spammed our moves until the other guys were dead, blissfully unaware that these memories would last us a lifetime. The legacy of Flash is difficult to quantify at the end of a YouTube video made by some idiot, so I'll leave it like this. Flash was a very flawed platform at its core. It was poorly optimized, had bad audio support, and security problems up the wazoo, which led to its untimely demise. But it was the foundation for so, so much internet creativity that we now take for granted. 
Let me just name some popular names that got their start making things in Flash or on Newgrounds. Chris O'Neill, ONING, and now the creator of Oni Plays. Aaron Hansen, Ego Raptor, creator of Game Rumps. Alan Becker, Animator vs. Animation, see for yourself. Neil C. Sierrega, way too many classics in his catalog to count, but one is definitely Potter Puppet Pals. Tom Fulp, creator of Newgrounds, also behind The Behemoth, which made Castle Crashers and other excellent games. Marcus Bromander, Puffballs United, creator of the Henry Stickman Collection, one of the biggest indie success stories in recent memory. So on, and so on, and so on. The list of people who can thank Newgrounds or Flash for contributing to their creative careers in a positive way is so massive that it's impossible to list them all. And not to mention the millions, even billions of viewers who have enjoyed the content and enriched their lives through the free entertainment provided by these creators through the decades. From the bottom of my heart, thank you Flash for what you've done for us.